A reading from the Gospel of the Egyptians. O living water, O child of the child, O glorious name, O living eon, living one, who sees the eons, who is eternally eternal. You are what you are. You are who you are. You who lives in the heart, this great name of yours upon me, O self-begotten perfect one, who is not outside me, I see you, O you who are visible to everyone. For who will be able to comprehend you in another language? Now that I have known you, I have mixed myself with the unchangeable. I have armed myself with an armor of light. I have become light. For the mother was at the place because of the splendid beauty of grace. Therefore, I have stretched out my hands while they were folded. I was shaped in the circle of the riches of light, which is in my bosom, which gives shape to the many begotten ones in the light into which no complaint reaches. I shall declare your glory truly, for I have comprehended you. O oh God of silence, I honor you completely. You are my place of rest, O oh formless one, who exists in the formless ones, who is, raising up the man in whom you will purify me into your life, according to your imperishable name. Therefore, the incense of life is in me. I mixed it with water after the model of the archons in order that I may live with you in peace of the holy ones. You who are really, truly forever. This morning's reading is from the Prophecy of the New Covenant, chapter 90, Prophecy on the Revelation and the Opening of the Seven Seals. On the first Sunday following Epiphany, the man vowed to God went in company with the companions of the way to the sanctuary in the wilderness regions of the desert to greet the image and the word of God manifest at sunrise. And the clerical community was gifted by God's grace, manifest to the congregation at the consolatory, where they all did partake of God's true Eucharist of the second advent. Afterwards, they assembled together to give thanks in a communion service of bread and water. Following the liturgical services, the man went to a hilltop to contemplate the events of their vigil of prayer and thanksgiving. And the voice born of heaven came to him in the loving spirit of Jamil. God will not conceal himself henceforth. God has come down from heaven to speak to men in the light of his image. By his word, they may know that his judgments, statutes, laws, and doctrines are good. He has given them spiritual bread from heaven to eat, the image of his being, and the spiritual truth from heaven to drink the word of his being. Let all dedicate themselves to God and turn from the world and its ways. Let the righteous who may be far from God look upon the image of his countenance and hold to the way, lest they be judged with the wicked. No nation, no person can ignore God's judgment, a judgment that is just and right and illuminates the whole universe. The righteous have prayed for this judgment. The wicked disbelieve it, but none should fear it. The races of the earth, being mortal, are cursed from the womb. They are under the powers of darkness who first turned their ancestors away from God. 
But now with the appearance of God's image and word, the righteous may turn to God's mercy and rejoice in their salvation. Darkness shall perish, perish with God's presence, and all wickedness shall be erased. Therefore, let the nations and peoples of the earth return to God's way, for he shall recover the remnant of those who love him, the living who are on earth, and all the spirits of the universe of being who have awaited his coming, and with it their rescue from darkness. And God shall give new life of soul to all spirits. Recalled by his word, they shall see his image, and out of his love for his created, God shall restore anew that which darkness has taken away. For he is the God of the living. He has never caused death to any living creature. Within the womb of his being, God will conceive new life for the righteous spirits who love him. And they shall be born as new souls created in God's image and filled with his word. A new generation of spirits come forth out of all former generations of flesh to inhabit a world of spirit. And they will have no memory of suffering, pain, sorrow, and death, which are strange to the Lord. The voice ceased as suddenly as it had come, leaving the man alone on the hilltop under the glorious rays of the sun. And motivated by the inspiring voice, the man thought, men and women of God living the way together formed not only a new church, but a new people as well. And within the new church, each person is required to be a cleric, living God's way under oath. In this way, people become knowledgeable in sacred teachings and serve God first before any secular powers. A lay community is not able to do this. Therefore, a new church of the Second Advent was a prerequisite to the new world order. <clears throat> he reasoned that even if the whole world were converted to any one of the existing religions, the world would not change for the better. The world religions, like the peoples of the world, cannot of themselves bring peace to the world, for neither the existing religions nor the peoples are at peace with themselves, with nature, or with the cosmos. More importantly, they are not at peace with God. Peace is only possible by the intercession of God through the very powers and forces of creation, namely intelligent and divine light. No human institution can, of itself, achieve more than human ideals. Peoples like religions are divided and in conflict on the international, social, and family levels. Unless people become spiritual, allowing the soul to dominate human thought by divine intelligence and spiritual consciousness, the races of the world will always be rivals and oppose any universality of order instituted by secular or ecclesiastical governments. This tendency, he reasoned, was part of the human condition prevalent in human and social affairs. Only a divine power, a force manifest within the sun, indeed in the suns and the stars of the whole material universe, acting upon people's inherent spiritual natures, can motivate them to spiritual ends and not to human ones. With the coming of God's divine light, that is his image and word, filling all of creation, physical and spiritual, a light endowed with divine reason, the human family must turn to that motivating power and force by living the way within a structured institution inspired of heaven. <clears throat> 